I was thinking, what do I do for my my first episode? I kind of had to think quite a bit about it, and I thought, well, actually, I should introduce my four wheels. So this is my SLK, and today we're going to have a little bit of a tour. We're going to go about talking about this car in particular, and we're also going to talk about the SLK range in general. So I hope you join me for the tour, and I hope you enjoy it. So we'll start our video here at the front of the car. This particular one is an AMG Sport model, which means you get the AMG front bumper, which looks quite nice and quite sporty, and a little bit more aggressive than the standard Sport model. You also get the AMG wheels, and the car also sits about a centimetre lower than the Sport model. And again, so we move around to the back of the car. As you can see, more evidence of the AMG trim down there. This one also has reverse parking sensors on it as well. And we're going to have a little look in the boot. Because lots of people say to me that this car hasn't got a boot. But in fact it has. You probably can't see it too well. But you do get quite a nice size little boot in here. It's enough. I've been away to Devon and it's enough to get you a week's worth of stuff in here. So here is my SLK's interior, as you can see, it's quite a nice place to be, it's quite a cosy place to be. That is the whole idea of a sports car, the idea you get the roof down, and then you've got all the air and all the light coming in as well, which is a fantastic feeling. So this particular one uh, is fairly standard model, however it does have a few optional extras. You do get the lever as standard on the AMG Sport model. This particular one though has got a few optional extras on the seats. It's got the red stitching, which though doesn't cost any extra, is actually a specified option. You have to spec this from the factory, or else it will just come with black stitching and black seat belts as well. And I like to think this adds a little bit of colour to the interior as well, and it goes quite nice with the grey bodywork as well. Nice little contrast. You may have also noticed that I've got these little vents. Now this was a little package that you get with this car. You get the heated leather seats, and you also get this thing which you're not too familiar with, Mercedes, called Air Scarf, and it does what it says on the tin. It basically blows out some air here, it's around your neck, and it's fantastic on um, cool evenings, if you get a nice chilly autumn morning, maybe go out for a drive and you want to get the roof down, the sun's out, it's a fantastic way of actually getting air to you. And I find the best combination to have the air scarf on, usually low, and I also have the footwell heating on as well, nice and low. So as you can see, we've got a nice three spoke steering wheel here, you've got your controls on here as well. It does also have the command system, which means you also get this little button here where you can talk to the car, which I don't generally tend to do. Me being a bit of a brummy, it has trouble understanding my accent. Uh, you also get a bit more stitching in there as well. You get the red stitching in the steering wheel, you get the red stitching in the door as well. And you also get it around the gear lever there too. So in the centre here we have, a uh, we have air conditioning, not climate control. Climate control is an optional extra in this car, but I actually prefer air conditioning myself. Uh, we also have then a command system here now. This particular car is a 125 edition. Basically, you didn't get anything extra. All you got was a sat-nav upgrade. Now, with this one, it should have had just a Mercedes sat-nav, but you could opt for £750, like the owner of this car did, and actually get the command system put in, which is a fantastic system. I absolutely love it. And the main giveaway, you get a slightly bigger screen on it, which you can't quite see on here, unfortunately. And you also get the SD card slot, which is just underneath the on button there. My other favourite feature, which I'm probably going to show you when I get the roof down a little bit, so I'll quickly show you now, is this particular little function here. Now this is the buttons for the roof, so you've got the roof, which is a big silver button, you've also got the little button here which is for putting all four of the windows down. You do have some little windows at the back there. And I have to love this, because if you've ever seen the film Goldfinger, you will know James Bond's Aston Martin, his DB5, has a little flip up panel in the middle just like that now I've got roof controls admittedly he does have all these ejector seats and missiles and whatever else he has on that particular car um, but I like to think it's still got the same effect you can impress someone sitting in the passenger seat flipping that up and putting the roof back if only it had missile launchers for speed cameras but hey ho we can only dream anyway that is the interior done I'm going to go around to the engine bay now. I open the bonnet and go the engine bay and I'll show you under the bonnet of the car as well. 
So here is the beating heart of my SOK. As I mentioned, this particular one is a 200. That is the smallest engined model that I do in the range. However, this particular one is a 1.8 turbo and actually gets you 180 odd horsepower, which is quick enough for 0 to 60 in seven seconds. If you want a little bit more power, you can go for the 250, but I think it's only about 0.3 seconds quicker than 60 for me. It wasn't really worth the extra. And they're a little bit wearer. You can also get the 250 CDI 2.1 diesel. But for me, I personally prefer having a petrol engine in my sports car. You can also get the 350 V6. It's 3.5 litre V6. Uh, however, if you really want power, I think a lot of people go for the 5.5 litre AMG. Uh, the 55 AMG model that you can get in here. And it's always amazing. That actually, this looks quite tight in this engine bay this 1.8 four cylinder I can imagine just getting a, a 5.5 litre V8 in here there's not that much room in here so I can imagine the V8 models are really packed in here and I think those 0 to 60 I think are probably less than five seconds um, and absolutely can imagine it's a stunning car I know a few people have had an SLK before like this one and then traded up to the AMG and they say the difference is night and day However, I'm quite happy with this car. It does for me. It's a nice sporty little car, but it's also quite practical, quite good on fuel as well. Okay, so I'm just going to go out and start up this, okay? Just so you can hear what the engine sounds like. As you can hear, it's quite a nice, sweet sound little engine. Actually, considering it's a standard exhaust, I think it sounds quite raspy as well at the back. Particularly at the moment as it's cold. So now I've come to show you one of my favourite features of the SLK, which is the hard top. This hard top is absolutely revolutionary when the SLK came out in 1996. And lots of manufacturers actually adopted it since then and actually take nine windows from the door. We still get quite a few soft tops, but having owned a soft top car before, I definitely prefer the actual hard top. So I'm going to put this down now. I've got my favourite compartment. see, stuff starts to happen. And then suddenly, a lot more lights and a lot more air coming into the car. So that brings us to the end of the tour with my SLK. I will be doing a driving video, a little bit of driving review of the SLK, but that's going to be a separate video. If you have any questions about this particular SLK or about the SLK model in general, please do let me know and I'll try and do my best to answer them. If you like the video, make sure you push the like button and if you want to see more of myself and the SLK, make sure you push the subscribe. So thank you very much for watching and I will see you next time. Goodbye.